kiting. I'm running out. I had to flash I'm out. here. I, I can keep going. I've Ian one. Ian Draven. Get Draven. That was an essential flash from Odd One right Whoa. there. He was going down and now he's burning. He's burning. Welcome back to day two, the North American LCS Summer Split. We hope you're burning out in the hot summer sun. Right now, we'd like to welcome Dignitas' Kiwi Kid to the desk. The Kiwi Kid. All right. Uh, <laughs> you guys, uh, you kind of said it yourself. You set the pace that game. Where did this come from? I think it mainly came from the solo death mid. I mean, I don't mean to, like, rag too much on Reginald, but... I don't know. I was like ahead 40 CS very soon, and I had a kill up. And also, I think Top had a successful gank. And when when we ro when we rotated four man Top, I felt like the beginning of that when we got a du double kill is like huge in momentum. So that solo kill mid was actually really close. Um, we had seen oh. Reggie already burn a lot of his cooldowns and stuff, but you came out of that with like 50 HP. Yeah. Uh, like what was going through your mind at that point? Like man, I was I've been so hesitant before in scrims and the, like that ends up like costing me a lot so i was like am i really gonna like all in him here mm -hmm. and i was like well he doesn't have ult because i saw him inch up to me when he was like level five because I, I knew like you know that's it's right it kind of obvious <laughs> and i just like ran from the six and so i knew he didn't have ult and then i was just like i think i just can kill him here and i did so you're obviously a very modest player. You say it yourself very much so. And you play champions that can, you know, obviously 1v1. You're singed going in. You make moves. What is it like on Kha'Zix for you? You're obviously more passive in the lane, but you were going uh -huh. all in. How, you know, oh, is this new for you? I've actually played the matchup top lane, um, Kha'Zix versus Kennen, and it's, like, almost impossible. But, <laughs> like, when Kha'Zix came out, I played him a lot min, and I know, like, where to space the lane. And when I saw... With Kha'Zix, and I might as well just tell this now because he's he got he got kind of nerfed. Mm -hmm. And with Kha'Zix, you actually want it to keep keep it like closer to your tower, but even. So when he when Reginald backed, I kind of like tanked the tanked some creeps a little, just so I can position the the lane the even lane, like 75% pushing towards me. All right. And then so when Reginald comes back, um, he would be isolated, and it gives me it lets me allows me to zone him and much more. Like, man, I don't even know how I thought about, about that. It's like, <laughs> it's like ambition just like uh -huh. rushed through my head and it's like, freeze lane here. <laughs> or he would say it in Korean, but I mean, I'm not Korean. <laughs> Little ambition pops up on your shoulder and yeah. gives you advice. No, that's, that's how I felt that that's game. That's a nice thing to have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I also want to shout out your your jukes this game. You had some very, very crucial sidesteps of, uh, of skill shots, but there was one time when you were up at top turret and you saw uh, some people rotating up. You know, what kind of happened in that situation where you went down? With, oh, when you oh died? yeah. I was like... Man, I'm at a, all all of our lanes are pushing, and Crumbs probably wasn't gonna get the tower by himself. Uh huh. Maybe he was going to, but I was like, well, Dyrus can probably like clear the wave really quickly, and I was like, you know, let's let me get the, this objective. I'm only two zero and two, so I didn't have a spree yet. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'll just I'll just die here. It's worth it's worth the objective, and we didn't really lose much momentum because, like I said. All the, pre all the other two lanes were pushing as well. So it wasn't a big deal. Right on. And it's definitely all smiles. It was a great game. <laughs> but the people also want to know, you guys had a pretty rough game one today. What was the mentality? You guys obviously broke it for this game too, but what, what, went, what went through your minds through that game? It's like, man, like, well, let me just be real. Like, we've been in a slump lately. Like, this is not even, like, including relegation in, like, four weeks before. Mm -hmm. It's just been, like, man... Every time, <laughs> every time I go in client and I check my match history, it's like it's bloody. <laughs> it's just like man, it's like man, what happened to the good old days, you know? But yeah, it feels really nice to win, and I'm glad we didn't, you know, start the season 0-3 because that's that would be that would kind of hurt. Because I think everybody has a win now, right? You, no, no, about everybody. I think every but team maybe. has a win now, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm just glad we can prove ourselves right, that yeah. we actually, you know, we're not a walkover. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of people are counting CLG out, and, you know, they beat us. So, like, what is that for us, you know? But, yeah, Good. I'm happy, for sure. All right. Yeah, everybody has a win, so everybody has a little bit of happiness now. But you talked about um, the mentality of the entire team when you're in a slump like that. And you guys are all in a gaming house, right? Does is How's the atmosphere in the house? We're, we're actually a pretty harsh team. 
Um, like, but you can kind of understand that because once people, what, like, nobody likes to lose, right? Yeah. And when you lose, that's when that's when flaws are like, you know, sternly looked at. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. We, I don't know. I can't even say we try not to be harsh because we're like, no. Well, yeah, it's, it's almost even better. Yeah, to be but harsh. It, it's better to be like brutally honest and like yep. lightly, like lightly, like consoling somebody because that's just not going to help. I like I like the way we do things. Right on. So, final question for you: uh, This game being obviously very good for Dig, is this a new direction? Is this something you guys were trying, or something that kind of fell into place for this game and you'll look to do again? Um, of course, we'll, we'll look to re replicate, you mm -hmm. know, the the movements and you know gameplay. But, you know, it's only one game, and it's really too little to tell so far. Even after Super Week, like, yes, it'll set the pace, but five games really isn't that much. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. All right, well, Kiwi Kid, thank you very much for the interview. Again, thank congratulations so on the awesome win and Kazakh's play. All right, everyone. After an impressive win in their NALCS debut yesterday, Velocity is looking to start the summer split 2-1 and one by manning up against Vulcan and their mid laner. Uh, Vulcan's really strong. I feel like they improved a lot. I don't think they have a weakness. I think everyone in their team is really solid. Velocity is pretty good. They beat Marm, which came as a surprise, so definitely wouldn't look down on anyone. But them coming in this season, they're definitely the rookies. We know uh, Vulcan's greatest strength is Man Cloud in mid lane, so we really want to try to shut him down and maybe force him into picks that might not benefit his team as much. We try to play safe. As long as we do that, I think we'll be fine. And now it's time for our fourth match, fifth match of the day. I'm still relishing in that game. It was just fun to cast. <laughs> Vulcan versus Velocity. These two teams have more in common than the consonant at the front of their names. Vulcan and Velocity come into this game with a one and one record after some very inconsistent play in the first two days of the split. Yeah, yesterday though, Velocity impressed everyone by taking down CLG in commanding fashion. And today, they were rolled by Curse in 31 minutes. And even though stats weren't spectacular right. against Curse, Maple Street, he still pulled off some incredible <laughs> moves in the loss. He's now Dodging. missing an action. Uh, <laughs> But he was 4-3-5 and five in that game. Super fun to watch. Just like Velocity, Vulcan and Bloodwater have run hot and cold so far this summer. Yeah, Vulcan, they looked hot in their first game versus Curse, but in their second game, they strayed away from their end game team compositions and they lost to Coast. Uh, this is really exemplified by Psycho Sid. Mm -hmm. He wrecked house as Kennen <laughs> in the first game, and he got first blood all by his lonesome, but he got bullied by Zion Spartan as Elise in the second game. Uh, the second one, he was 1 3 and 5. <laughs> We'll see what they can do. So now let's take a look at the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Vulcan. Psycho Sid in the top lane. Xmithy is in the jungle. Mandatory Cloud in mid. Zuna on AD carry. And Bloodwater at support. And in the red corner, it's Velocity Esports. Chris is up top. NK Inc. is in the jungle. Vile Rose at mid. Maple Street on AD carry. And Evaniska is supporting. So probably going to see that Cannon Band coming up. The Draven Band, unless they really want to give it to Maple Street. Mm. It's not like that's his only one. So maybe they'll let it through because Caitlyn and whatever behind that is just as good. We've seen so many Draven picks actually really popular in North America. We're, we're kind of like the leading Draven scene, I'd, I'd have to say. The League of Draven? Yes. <laughs> the League of North American Dravens. <laughs> but yeah, definitely the Kennen, Rise, those have just been so popular now, along with Zach, um, along with Elise, actually, too. She has seen mainly the album, right, bringing her out. Mm -hmm. Nobody really wants to kind of take her back and forth, but Nintendo Dex is kind of on that train, also on his j tank fiddlesticks train as <laughs> yeah. well. Hopefully we get to see that a little bit more this season. I wonder if, like, <laughs> other people are going to pick up that tank fiddlesticks because it was it was very impressive, but Nintendo, he has a, a sort of a reputation for for all these wacky new jungles, you know, and not a lot of people, people are hesitant to jump on the Nintendo <laughs> bandwagon. We'll see. Setting trends. Setting trends all day. So we have Elise, yes, getting banned out the Evelyn. Twisted Ooh. Fate Rise. Jace, so Kennen passes through. Psycho Sid, what you gonna do? Yeah, Jana banned, Kennen up. I'm 
I'm hoping somebody picks Ken in here because that just obvious counterplay isn't there. Kazix though, still, he's the golden boy right now. He's just so powerful. Um, still with the old the old W's. You yep. automatically are evolving <laughs> W on this patch. They do have the Draven. They do have the Kennen. Shen is still open. Uh, something that Velocity mm. loves on that team, too. So they have some really safe and comfort picks already. Yeah, so they could uh, go Ninja versus Ninja. Pick up that <laughs> pick up that Shen and you know gain that little the split pu split pushing aspect as well right. as the the extra shield that you would need. It's interesting that Vulcan banned Janna and they gave away Kennen. So I'm interested to see what what their next answer is because a lot of these games that Kennen has been and he's just been deciding the entire outcome of, of mm -hmm. you know half the team fights at least. Looks like a Thresh and a Nasus. Evaniscus may be liking that. His zone of play is exquisite. So we'll see if he can grab that up for himself. But slow lock-ins here. They're definitely some consideration, if you can say the word, being yeah, put uh, into these picks. A lot of, uh, uh, we were caught off guard yesterday too because a lot of people against Vulcan were, were banning out the Thresh or taking the yeah. Thresh and leaving Sona for Bloodwater, which is one of his favorite supports. But it looks like, you know, Thresh has, has moved above the, right. the Sona for him. If he does leave it on this one, he, yeah, you know, he may have a new favorite support here. Definitely not one to sneeze at. Thresh has always been at the top of the line. Actually, Nami is going to be locked in. We have seen a bit more play for her coming in. I love all the new Nami changes. Uh, Jat was saying that they were, you know, a small incremental ones just coming on. And right. like we, they, she keeps getting, Reached you know, that. buffs because she hasn't really been embraced by a lot of people and, and played a lot. They are actually substantial changes. 10 more move speed yep. uh, on the pass that it gives to people. The bubble up to 1.5 seconds, and you can leave that at level 1 Q and max her her uh, it's like her your heal. one skill wonder. The, yeah, the surging tides there. It's it's she's a very strong support, but very mechanically intensive. Landing the bubbles is is a huge part of Nami, and it really makes or breaks that support. We'll have to see how this combination for Velocity works out. The Kennen Ultimate, not very effective with Jarvan Cataclysm unless it's kind of dropped immediately. Yeah, you can set up the fight, but maybe it'll be Jarvan Flag Toss, Kennen Start, finish somebody with Cataclysm or catch them in after they have been stunned. They're going to have to organize that pretty well for the fight. We see a Tristana possibly for Zuna, one of those favorite carries that he had back on uh, Spring Split. Mm -hmm. We talked about the Zuna going away from his endgame hyper carry and that not working out so well for them. So he's right. going, hovering at least over mm -hmm. his baby. Tristana, <laughs> obviously his favorite uh, AD carry here, and he will lock that one in. She is just so strong late game, partially due to Ooh. her two disengages, but mm -hmm. also partially to the rapid fire, her Q, which when maxed, gives as much attack speed as three recurve bows. Yes. Just to put that in perspective for you guys. Three of them. That's, that's kind of a lot. That's a, that's a lot. It's a good chunk Wait, of 3,000 it gold. It's, it's, it's four. Three. It's three. <laughs> <laughs> There's, just if, if you spend buy all one. your money on recurve bows, and you can have as much attack speed as yeah, just perfect. Don't have to level Q. We see Vile going back onto Kale. Pretty convinced that that is the only champion on his champion list. No, I'm just kidding. But he has played nah, it. And he two. plays it to... It's, it's two. Yeah, it is two. two. That's right. <laughs> he has played it to great... It, to, the ultimates have been perfect. Their engagements, their... their Kale marries, if you will, on the saves. So nice. he has been really nice. putting this in his back pocket. But he, he's not the one to make super duper plays, right? He's the one to kind of facilitate a good fight and make sure the team's doing everything right as they're in and out of it. And yeah. he's been the one to do that. There's a lot of, uh, you know, catch uh, pick potential here from from Velocity. I, li I like this uh, this team for them. But, but Vulcan, it looks like, you know, we're looking for the answer that they're going to have for Kennen, and it's really just going to have to be great team positioning at the team fights. And yeah. their their di last ditch effort will be the the dark passage uh, from Thresh. Uh, both of their carries do have jumps of their own as well, so they're just looking to get away from Kennen uh, and jump out of it. So hopefully, they'll be able to do that quick enough before they get stuck. Yeah, Vulcan has punched their late game ticket on this one. You have the Trist, you have the Nasus, you have the Rumble. They're looking for late game team fights to really just crush people when they're in their hyper carry spot. So we'll see if they can get to that. We'll see what kind of pressure we get out of Velocity Esports. A very press R composition coming from them. So we'll see if they can get that mid game into their favor. We are on to the Riff for our next match, Kobe and Rivington the third, bringing it to you live for Vulcan versus Velocity Esports. And everybody uh, coming out in a pretty tight pack here. Only a, a couple pings coming off, and it looks like a one red elixir here. This is the 350 gold red elixir here. Start for Vile Rose on the Kale. 
Kyle Rose taking a big chunk of change out of the pocket. We're going to see the entire team here. Zuna kind of putting himself on the outside. They could get rear. Oh, wow. They're, I thought they were going to put themselves away from the turret. It was going to be goal side there for Vulcan for a second, but they did not choose to push themselves in. They're just knowing that they're going to be able to ward with safety. Very, very safe. They're coming. So the Jarvan, the flag, uh, the vision on it was actually reduced a little bit. That's not very big of a deal, right. but it, it is worth mentioning. Um, the, the vision radius that it gives uh, got taken down a little bit in that last patch. And I just want to go over again. Okay, my recurve bow point that I really was so happy to deliver on Tristana. <laughs> it's three. If she's maxed it out, then it's worth three recurve bows. And there it is. Velocity, or rather Vulcan. Putting down some wards on the top side of the map. They do the golem ward once again using the explorer for that. And the forward ward being a regular. NK Inc. and team just kind of waltzing about. <laughs> they're really, they have power in numbers, but they're not really worried about too much. Yeah, right. it's it's kind of funny the last few games we've seen everyone invading red sides. These yeah. are these are all wards going down on the opponent's red side jungle. So if people are researching after this week, uh, <laughs> or after this day even of of LCS. North American LCS, then they're going to start seeing, oh, you know what? Everybody's invading red side, and they might have some some different strategies coming out, even tomorrow. And this choice may be made off the fact that they do not see anybody doing golems in the top lane off of the Explorer Ward. It was mid for Zuna. Not going mid, but they were mid until they saw that. Now they're heading top lane. There's the pings coming out from top lane. Kennen going to be not starting with a Dorian's Blade because Chris was thinking this is probably going to be uh, yeah. the two versus one, even though the blue side here, the AD and support, didn't start bottom for that double golem advantage. And Bloodwater Kenan, and Zuna, they really wanted this. Kennen's not too bad in a 2v1, but Thresh makes any 2v1 just treacherous and annoying. Yeah, anytime you do have one of those pulls, right? <laughs> <laughs> it just makes it even more dangerous. You have to watch out for that. So Rumble now in mid lane. Gonna get a lot of roam out of that possibly if he can push Kale back. Kale not really one to get, you know, waved back to her turret. So we'll have to see how Vile and both Psycho Sid play that out. He's usually been on Kennen, so. We'll see how he takes this role. Yeah, this is interesting that we have, yet again, the sort of top laner, you know, for Vulcan. It's mm -hmm. actually going to be playing mid right. lane. Yeah, it's a just, good point. You know, just like last game. And he's using Rumble, which is Vile Rose's, you know, previous go-to champion uh, oh, for the mid yep. lane. <laughs> he's like, here, taste my sword. Getting out. To, uh, double buff onto Man Cloud. This is good pressure onto the bottom lane. This may mean a fast turret for them. We'll have to see if they put the pressure right onto it as that minion wave gets crushed in. And it looks like they are going to focus it down. NK Inc. just trying to proxy this so it doesn't get to the turret. And it looks like Xmithy is going to have to come to help. This is so harsh for Mandatory Cloud. Keeping him out of experience range. He's only a half a bar of level 1. And now we have Smithy joining. But he's wasting his time. They're so far past the turret right now. It doesn't even matter. And Velocity are just bullying them off this bottom. And this is safety. Seeing Xmithy, they have called to the lanes. Do whatever you want. Play however you want. But do it safe. We have the jungler down here. And we're pressuring it completely. This was just perfect timing by Velocity. They he didn't even let uh, oh Vulcan gosh. get back to the turret in time. Man Cloud still level one. Threes roaming around him right now. I have to get him a baby chair in a second. This Kazix is going to be a real, real problem for them early. Uh, he's so low that Vulcan are going to have to make up for this somewhere else. Ooh, they have, there they are in the top lane. They are pressuring so hard. But where can Mandatory Cloud go? It's not like, all right, this one's down. It's completely a farm lane now. Let's swap. Chris will take advantage of that. And look how good Kennen doing in the 2v1. Chris playing it very well. Yeah, it's very dangerous to freeze a lane at any point in the game. We saw CLG pay for it. Double yeah. lift was talking about. That was a poor decision by him when they, they froze the lane in their game yesterday and lost the mid turret for it. You lose so much map Ooh, pressure when you freeze. That is a lot of damage, but very low levels. They can't get in for too much. They have the crowd control to make that gank count, but good positioning by Vile Rose there to keep himself safe. Yeah, he's going to be all right in that mid lane and hold on to his flash, too. Yep. Not panic panicking right there. He knew it's it just slows. Yeah, the red still, too. He even held that. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Passing through. Almost got one of his cues off. He can do that in the lightning rush form. But he decides to stay back. We're going to get a safe board here from Evaniscus in the river. And it looks like they're now going to try to answer the tower pressure. They just put on that turret. But... Mandatory Cloud's going to get himself back in in that free lane now. Yeah, so what that means, though, is that three members of Velocity were able to uh, were able to push in that top lane mm -hmm. here, and their pressure has just changed. It's gone from bottom up to top now. 
bit of action in middle. As you see the push coming in from NK Inc. He is trying to set up these lanes for his teams to get back to, reset them as well. The ward in the mid lane allowing Psycho Sid, like we saw last time, Reginald placing it there for the roam of that champion. So they're safe on that. We're going to get Chris to back. We'll see where he goes on this one because Vile has gone down to the bottom. So it looks like he may go mid. Yeah, Vile, uh, he's got a really, really big upper hand in this matchup. Level 5 versus oh, a level 4 dear. man cloud who got starved. That turret's gone too, so he has really nowhere to run. He throws down as much damage as he can, hoping somebody will be in range. Nothing. So we had some free farm from Manitoba Cloud finally after the turret had gone down, but he hadn't gone to buy after that. So he was still start. Yeah, he was yeah. still basically starting items oh. now. Evanisca is going to flash out. Oh, the jump in! The rocket jump! Does he have enough? The finalize goes to Xmithy in the jungle instead of Zuna. That's a little bit rough for them, but money on anyone is good. Yeah. You know, Nasus, it's always say he doesn't need a lot of money to become a real big factor in the game, whereas Tristana definitely does. But they're happy to get the kill uh, regardless of that. And Maple Street. Oh my gosh, Maple getting quite far out here. They, he gets around. Oh, he flashes it, but he flashes straight away from the hook. Side to side is the best choice, but he goes down. It's going to be the turret. Yeah, unfortunate right there. Bloodwater already had the hook going, and yeah. Maple Street catches the end of it. Another kill for Vulcan plus the turret means that they are oh, now ahead of gold. Huh? And K Hank, watch out. He, there's but, a 2v1 well, here. Yeah. yeah, he's like, wait, Zuna didn't jump right away. That's not right. I probably shouldn't do this. Yeah, Zuna's over there. What are the, the casters are screaming for no reason. <laughs> I'm the one that's screaming, guys. I'll let you know if something's going to happen. <laughs> Zuna's sitting there calm for once while we're Screaming our heads off. <laughs> we got the Fiendish Codex coming out for Vile. Looking for some quick ability power for himself, along with that cooldown. He just wants to get more keys out, chase down people, and get the kills. And it looks like it's going to be up for Mandatory Cloud. He's like, I'm far back here. I shouldn't have to ward. And it looks like it might get scary for him. <laughs> yeah, it, it would definitely be scary uh, in in the bottom side of this uh, of this map here for for Vulcan because the wards you can see them start to encroach here and since they took control of that side early again three people up top for velocity they do not want to let up uh, this early game uh, pressure that they've got rolling. Vile's the only level seven in the game. Maple Street is somehow still four, probably because they had that three lane push for so long. He kind of got less experience. But Man Cloud's made it up to six. He's back in like in the game, even with his death. Get not as many items as he probably should have or CS, but he's leveled himself right back into it. Yeah, and that it, it really came at a price though, and the price of is probably going to be this top turret here as they look to go. I don't think they have the damage to get the turret down. NK Inc's trying to focus. They're kind of split here on it. Maple Street just sitting in the equalizer. And then Psycho Sid trying to get the kills back. Overheats a little bit, but he gets himself in range. Gets that auto attack down. It looks like they may be able to finish this off. The double bubble coming in. And here comes Chris. Slicing Maelstrom goes down. The lock up onto Smithy. He finalizes that before the NASA assault. After the NASA assault, I should say. They're going to look for Psycho Sid. He gets it before NK Inc. And the double kill. Very helpful for Chris on Kenneth. Yeah. Uh, almost able to finish off another to make that one go even, but not quite. Chris comes up to save the day. Maple Street actually lagging behind in this game. We have to say, you know, he's he's been called out as carrying the team in the, in past games, but it's going to be a bit rougher for this one. Back-to-back -back deaths means he's missing so much time that he could be CSing. The mandatory cloud is just really getting the short end of the stick here. His turret has maybe 100 health on it, and he just got that lane. It's like, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Vile Rose knows he has his ultimate. If anything even goes that wrong, bam, puts it on, takes down the turret. <laughs> that was uh, that's flashy points right there. <laughs> just in case anyone hopped out of the shadows at him. Yep. He's, he's able to get that turret down, and that means all three outer turrets here down for Vulcan. Uh, the, the perimeter has been breached, and the dragon control now for Velocity as well, as, as they're really going to have command of this early map. So the site stolen choice picked up for Bloodwater as they want to control this map, really stop whatever is happening or engage something to be happening. The Philo coming out for Evaniscus, and he's going to go for the consumables consistently there. Evaniscus, he's uh he's got a lot of consumables, whereas we have uh, um, he's also got gold per per ten that right. we have to mention, and there's no gold per ten per se on Bloodwater, but we everyone says you know the sight stone actually is kind of like if those wards were gold, you know that would be <laughs> the the most effective gold per ten. So as long as he's making use of all those wards. He, he's kind of also on the on the same page making there. Making use of it and making it happen. Pink Ward's going down to the Dragon. They also have back cover with the ward just placed. 
looks like they won't get too much. They're going to trade a tower for this one in mid if the damage is there from Vulcan. Well, it is a full tower, so they've got a bit of time to get there, and we'll have to see. Do they want to flank this one? Because there's no Kha'Zix here. If they actually were able to catch someone, mm -hmm. then it would be a four on five. Vulcan are very aware of this, though. Doing a good job backing off. 1645 Dragon. We'll have to see about that time what movement is really coming in. Velocity Esports seems to be dictating a lot of what's going on. It's easy to do when you have taken down the first three outer turrets of the game. You can see reactionary measures coming in from Mandatory Cloud as he is just trying to get back in and push lanes for his team. Yeah, and they've been giving him all the free lanes that they can find. They're like, wow, we really need Mandatory Cloud to get back in this game. Mm -hmm. The early uh, zone from him was actually pretty harsh, but They've fed whatever open space they have to him, and he's right back up there. Look at that CS. He's almost back, uh, almost back in the game. Plenty of plenty of levels too. The experience levels are fine. It's almost it's almost like the double buff steal on Meteos. It was amazing in the beginning, but he kind of didn't work on it. You didn't keep knocking on that and break down that post. So he's just able to get back in, strengthen up. Twelve minutes in now, they're going to be up three thousand gold. Yeah, and we talk about all the time where Rumble's a champion that doesn't need a lot of right. money to be effective during that mid game because his kit is uh, is just the base levels are so strong. Mm -hmm. Kazakh is kind of the opposite. He needs that farm, and so they're doing a good job. Him and Tristana are the two people that Vulcan just want to funnel all their money into, yeah. and then they're just going to have uh, the the damage potential that they're actually looking for with this comp. Good damage on the turret. Looks like they're going to be able to do quite a bit here. Blood going for the flash hook. They get out to Kenny. Can it be the lockdown? No slicing Maelstrom for this fight. And it's a shutdown coming in for Man Cloud. He gets a double kill here. This is what letting a Kha'Zix farm will do. Can he get the triple? The red buff is on. The wither will be there. The kill will be there as well. A triple coming in for Man Cloud. Maybe they'll hold this one for a fourth, but they're going to let it walk away as they celebrate on that one. The plays from Bloodwater. This is why everybody was taking away or banning away the Thresh from Vulcan. Turns around right there. He got the hook. So it didn't matter that he missed the backwards flay because he's put down the box and they were able to finish off uh, that cannon before anything went down. So easy, easy kills and answer back right there. This is exactly what Vulcan needed. They're getting right back in there as far as gold concerned. And if you're in the game, they're actually they would actually consider themselves ahead because they can only see the the kill, the scoreboard here. So Chris, with that needlessly large rod by. Would have done quite a bit of damage, but the Seeker's Arm Guard may have kept him alive longer in that. That cannon being out of the fight is huge. You only have the Jarvan initiation, and like you said in the beginning, Kobe, you have a Kha'Zix, you have a Tristana, they can both hop out, and even if somebody lanterns, you can get another one out. So a good disengage coming in here when they don't have Chris. Uh, the, the only thing right now for Vulcan is that that option for the flash hook is not going to be available yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. It's a big so, window to work with. So they don't really have, that's like their only hard engage. They don't really have any more hard engages. They do have plenty of slows, though. So a tower dive would actually be not beneficial for Velocity right, right now. They they have to be very careful because a Rumble Ultimate and a Nasus Wither on people is it's going to be hard to get out of that dive once they commit. Just slowly walk it in. Don't mind what we're doing, anyone. Big Smithy as he tries. <laughs> Going up, throws down the wither. There it is, guys. We're just walking in. But that's going to be it. Let's see. It is the ultimate coming up for Evaniscus. So you can see them being very cautious until that huge disengage for them comes up. And now that it is, they kind of start to settle it up. Yeah, I don't know if they actually even want to fight until no. Chris finishes that Zanya's. Right. Zanya's is going to be really the key item that Velocity are looking for oh, to, win, to win that next team fight. They Once he gets that, the entire landscape is going to change for the five on fives. He's got the Seeker's Arm Guard plus completion to fully go through. 15 minutes in though, it's still good. You got another three minutes to really get that core average item in, depending on what you're grabbing. Ninja Tabi on to NK Inc. as he has been throwing himself in the fight over and over. And the Nashus 2 is coming out on Kale, something we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, the reason this game's so slow right now is right. because they're, they're waiting on the item thresholds. Uh, it's, it's really become just common knowledge for all the teams. Like, <laughs> you have to fight as soon as you hit that break point. Uh, if, if they go in before, then it could be disastrous here as Mentor Cloud hops Ooh. in for some nice isolation There's damage. A few hits, doesn't get the ulti off just yet. He actually holds it down, throws on the ult there. Won't be in range for the next jump. No cooldown. No real wards up in the top lane area for Man Cloud to really mm -hmm. con continue that chase either. So it would be a bit dangerous and he doesn't want to press his luck. He got the ultimate off of Kennen. Yep. So that's a big enough win for them. And they, they know that they've freed up uh, one threat from Velocity's down. So Zuna's free to push this bottom. 
And we've been talking that Vulcan really wants to play this for the late game. That's what they're doing. Like you said, playing safe, getting kills when they can. Mandatory Cloud knew he didn't have to go after that. Their kills will come soon. They're already up three kills at this point. Dragon coming up in just about a minute. Yeah, you wouldn't even know that, you know, Mandatory Cloud got, uh, no. got zoned out for the beginning. You know, he's already got Brutalizer and uh, the, Murama uh, the Man Immune, not Muramana mm -hmm. yet, uh, already. So that's plenty of damage right there. And he's feeling just fine at this point. We might be overplaying that early game even because, you know, it is a one versus two. And of right. course, he was going to start off bad. The death also hurt him, but uh, he, everything's, everything's peachy now. We'll see what they can produce off of this. Looks like they're all going to hover towards bottom lane. Vile Rose just hanging around in mid to make sure there's no pressure that is unwarranted right now. He does have a ward on him though, so he's got to kind of be careful. Even that minion wave there. Chris right behind him. It looks like they're going to start actually stacking the lanes now to get this pressure on. But Mandatory Cloud still just chilling up top. So 10 seconds. We've got the Dragon coming up. And mm -hmm. again, Kha'Zix top. He's not going to be there for this one. Velocity are actually not sending five people towards the dragon. We're going to have Kale roam up top. He does not run into Kazakhs. Oh, they do in the jungle. Here we go. There it goes. They're going to find each other. Vile Rose just wants the red. He's trying to get it. Gets the last Q back, and he is maybe able to escape this. Mandatory Cloud waiting on those spikes. He turns around. Vile Rose throws on the ult instantly. Mandatory Cloud reads it. Goes back in. Forces the flash. Misses the spikes. He would have gone and in. And Vile Rose is not out of it yet. They've got him surrounded. Oh, he is going to be walking on some pineapples on that. He's only got a little bit of health left. Where's the speed? There's the heal. The harpoon just misses the backside. He does have red buff, but he's got to get the attack applied to make it count the Flash Flame Spitter. So they did blow a few flashes for that. They blew a couple flashes, plus the Dragon went down to Velocity. So he sort of traded his life plus the red buff there for a Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, not too shabby, but they delayed the full five on five team fight while Chris doesn't have his Zanya. So I'd, I'd definitely take that if I was Velocity. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Could have been played a little bit better there, but uh, it, it was not the end of the world. And we've kind of been saying it here, it is really a piece together game for these guys. Look at the inventories, it's full of recipes, yeah, as Maple Street finishes his Bloodthirster things. But just all over the place, you know, ability tomes, we got a few armorers here, the Needlessly Raj, the Rod, and then by our Giants belts finally coming in. So we're going to see longer fights for these teams, and I think that's going to start benefiting Vulcan. Vulcan definitely looking, uh, they're happy to stretch it out. Kha'Zix and yeah. Tristana late game are beastly. And Nasus just gets to be extremely tanky. He gets so much free HP from his from his ultimate. Right now he's level 10. Next level, uh, he's going to get uh, the second level of his Fury of the Sands. And he'll be able to stick in the middle for a long duration while we have Zuna with his Infinity Edge, Tristana, poking from the outside. He has got that built up, so Infinity Edge the Bloodthirster now. Neither of them really going for the attack speed on their build yet since they just got that core item. Trist with four on the Q, so we can see that Zuna has been ramping that up as he was getting closer to his Infinity Edge. Yeah, everybody just just chilling. Both sides waiting for really different are. points in the game like here. like a stalemate right now. Uh, not comfortable until they finish the, the item that they're going for. It's, it's pretty interesting because both feel like once uh, once they stall out a little bit to get that extra piece of gold for the item they want, they're going to have the upper hand. Uh, Vulcan counting on that Tristana, and Velocity counting on that uh, Kennen. Is it going to be that big, though? 460 gold in for Chris. He is in the top lane again. You can see just how safe Velocity is playing. Like you were saying, once they get the item, they'll go in. But right now, he is hoping that that item makes a very big impact. Only 500 for him as he's fully pushed the top lane, so he's still got time there to wait go. on the Zanyas. No, oh, no, he did get it. All right. Yeah, not only are, are we grouping up here, but we do have the completion. So that's the signal for Velocity. They're now going to look to start this off with that Nami wave. That, that, that's going to be the signal that everybody's waiting for. Ride Tidal wave. wave to come through, and then we go. It's a surfing ninja. Have you ever seen that movie, Surf Ninjas? We're going to get Kenan coming through on the tidal wave. I'm going to have to watch that tonight, then. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really only good if you're a, you're in the age group of 7 to maybe uh, 7 to 10. I definitely recommend there it. There's it the tidal wave. Right the wave. They go in. There's Chris with the ultimate on right away. Throws down, and he gets the Zanyas just after doing it in style. NK Inc. kind of caught in his own ultimate. He's going to find his way out, and they pinch Chris on the backside. They do not like Yordles that much. Triss feels bad about it. Maple Street with 31 HP 
just chilling in the back lines there. He was fine. Uh, he actually just stuck around. So they're actually coming to trade. One versus one. Or one for two? Yeah. One for two now. Yeah. <laughs> Little Man, it's not Maple Street. Oh, everything hit the, the wraiths that were just in the bush. That was perfect. He gets it, though. They are yelling this out. You can hear Zuna in the background. They are going to go for Baron, and it looks like they're going to be able to pick this up quite quick. Vile, what do you have in store? Your flash is down. Your ult is down. You are a risky man. NK Inc. has his smite and his flash. He can pull in and flash out if he get, if he's going to put the damage onto this. Baron, it looks like they're going to go for the steal here. We also have... They're uh, taking a lot of damage right now. A lot, a lot of damage. They're all getting very low, and Vile oh Rose is watching this. He is taking photos. Here comes Psycho Sid. He's like, step aside, please. I will do this for you guys. Don't worry. Overheats himself right away, though, so he can't give assistance to the team. Nice. Everybody's just trying to peel and split. They decide, OK, we need to go on him. But that may stop Baron. It's given the team long enough to get back. Here comes Chris from the right side. Can he get in? He's got two shocks down on Luke Smithy. Not enough for the third proc. He's he is going to keep the Baron health up. He's keeping that one low. It looks like they want to go for it, but they decide to turn around. Psycho Sid knows what they're doing. They're trying to get it. Can he get a poke on NK Inc? Just wants a few hits. There's a few more. The Equalizer right Right into Baron. It's going to be grabbed up by NK Inc. And they get out only losing on to Chris here. Vile has gone down previously. They did lose Evanescus actually. But the Baron gold is going to be huge for them. The game pretty much even. NK Inc. wins the Smite Wars right there. Smithy tried to flash in and he did pop his Smite. But we had uh, the Jarvan there picking that one up. Great move by NK Inc. They actually did a good job keeping the Baron aggroed so that he didn't regen all the way back up and they were able to pick that for, for Velocity. That was like a slow-mo Baron the entire time, just watching them take so much damage. And I was like, what is Vile Rose doing? They're gonna take that in seconds, but they don't really have the Triss damage yet. It's not late game, she's only level 12. She may have that three recurve bros of attack speed, but it's not creating as much as she needs it to. And it's not the output of damage you get in that late game Triss Such dangerous play. Baron play around 20 minutes. Is is almost always gonna be gonna be very dangerous play, and Dyrus calls it the noob magnet. That's exactly what can happen there. Vulcan started it up, but all they really did was soften it up for velocity. Vile now pushing the bottom. We know how the map gets when it's pretty objective free. Dragon's gonna be the one that's up, and you can see eyes deadly on that objective right now for velocity. They're gonna grab one and the other unless Bloodwater gets a very nice hook in here. The Oracles has been popped by Bloodwater. Looks like they're trying to get clean vision of what's going on, maybe after the fight to get themselves in. But no, they just want to get Dragon position after it's gone. So they got the global gold from Dragon. They took the second uh, creep objective on the map, but their middle turret already has a creep wave at it, and they're just going to push this one down. We might go into a base race. They are going to try to go hard. Second tier turret to second tier. That bottom turret taking quite a bit of damage. It is not going to fall as fast. They are on the inhibitor turret now. This second turret has just fallen for velocity, and Vulcan is going very hard with their own tanks, face tanking these turrets. It's going to be NK Inc. trying to take the turret for his team. The inhibitor turret falls as the as velocities rather starts to take damage or inhibitor starts to take damage I should say it's gonna be 23 minutes into this one and yes Kobe they are gonna go hardcore for this one it seems like both teams are trying to get it back after the inhibitor though will they, velocity they're dead even right now both of them get inhibitors and both of them are pulling Whoa. out Smithy staying with Zuna. They're going to be able to knock this down. Will they be able to stop him in the base? A few are backing Chris and NK Inc. just on the outside. There's nothing there. Maple Street forced to burn. They get an hit or Nexus to it, rather, and they take him down. A very big play coming in for Vulcan. So Mandatory Cloud, definitely the hero of this game. He goes back with the quick home guard boots by and hop onto Maple Street. Maple Street was trying to pull the same move Zuna was pulling, taking out another turret, staying there by himself, but he pays for it with his life. Mandatory Cloud with a surprise attack. Smithy coming in from the side, NK Inc. looking to just stop up these waves, but there is no pressure that Velocity isn't feeling right now. Every time they're in a wave, it's not free farm. They gave that to Mandatory Cloud earlier, and it seems to be backfiring now. Vile going in on a cloud. That's not much HP. The ultimate for him is up. He is going to throw it on, and he may not be in range. He's got the heal, which will put him there. Oh, my gosh. He goes down along with Mandatory Cloud. Nothing is free in the League of Legends. You're going to have to pay for that one with your life. He does get the kill onto... Kazakh there, which is a, a decent trade, though, because it's such on fire right now. Oh, Chris puts himself in the fight. That Zonia is to be locked up. He almost throws it down. No, he doesn't put it off. He never used it. NK Inc. thrown up in his ultimate, locks or pushes that down. Bloodwater just on the outside. Going to have the flag toss soon. Coming in from NK Inc. NK Inc. He gets there, but the play is back. It's going to be a few more attacks. Another kill coming in for NK Inc. He's going to be happy with this one on one final Q. And it looks like they will be able to chase Psycho Sid out of this. 
they're going to back. There's so much pressure from both teams, but they're not able to do anything after it. Yeah, that's huge oracles down there for Vulcan, though. That means that Eveniscus now has the upper hand, and he's actually got a lot of work to do with that thing because there's a there's just wards from Vulcan peppering the inside of their jungle. And after that base race, both bases missing an inhibitor each. I'm really saying, you know, from the beginning, we were kind of towards the Vulcan side for once this late game gets there. The HP coming in to Rumble, the HP coming in for Xsmithy, you start to lose the damage you get, you would get out of Kennen towards that late game if he's not as farmed. And we've seen that Chris has had a hard time in that top lane, only finishing his Zanya's right now. Yeah, there's, there's so many more factors we have to worry about now, too. It's not just, you know, team fight damage, it's it's turret damage. And we see this Lich Bane picked up by Kale. Yeah. So if they do go in another base race situation, this Kale is going to demolish buildings right now. Very smart buy by Vile Rose. They realize what extents this game can get to right now. So Bloodwater, that Oracle's on him. Got another one right another there. Another one. So, uh, a very uh, expensive Drop investment for him. Yep. But this means, you know, Velocity are confident to keep on pushing down this way. We have to remember all the home guard buys. If we do get into another situation where there's a, a base race, this new home guard, I love the home guard, the new strategies that it brings into all these base races. You have to worry about those <laughs> quick recalls because there are three of them up in the game right now. And, and that's going to mean uh, that it's even that much more dangerous right. to try and go for back doors. You have to make sure you are positioned correctly. We saw Velocity able to stop a few from going back. As mm. four of them now. They were getting, or Vulcan, rather, was able to stop that. That sentence just missing on the edge. 27 minutes in. We are 16 to 7 here on our fifth matchup. 39,700 to 39,400 gold. And really, the carry going to man cloud this fight. Here goes it's the rumble. The equalizer down. They throw down the Nami. Oh, so that's one for one on alts. But it's going to be a big chase that has a Rylas on the back side. Velocity was not able to get out as far as they wanted. And look, the Kennen ult not doing that much damage. Xsmithy walks right through it. Chris could go down. Vile's going to fall after. The double kill coming in for Sid. Mandatory Cloud looks to make a kill for his team, but it's going to be Zunas on Tristana to Draven. They almost get that kill on the spikes, but they're going to be chasing down the double kill for Zuna in mid. And only NK Inc. makes it out alive in an ace. Late game or in a five all live, I should say. <laughs> yeah, that was a spectacular play there from Vulcan. We had Mantor Cloud at right. the back line. Chunked down Nami, so she wasn't able to get back into it. And it forced Maple Street to defend the back line. It looks like they're going to go for the win right now. These are low timers. They're going to be able to throw some tomatoes at the stage. But it was a great performance. And it looks like Vulcan is going to be able to get themselves a win on the Nexus. NK Inc. is like, follow me. Follow me. I have candy out of the base. But they take the Nexus. They don't want it. They're going to go get some good stuff for themselves now. It's going to be the handshake for that victory. Decisive uh, team fight right there. That was the whole game. I mean, Vulcan really nicely played right there. We talked about the, the tankiness that Nasus gets for free with his ultimate. It made such a huge difference. The tankiness of Smithy versus the tankiness of NK Inc., the two junglers. When Jarvan jumped in, he just got blown up. Yeah, that was just great textbook play of the composition they brought to the table. We've seen Kha'Zix wreaking havoc. Kiwi Kid did it last game. Mandatory Cloud, we kind of, you know, said he was going to have a rough game, but he's mandatory cloud, and he did just that, floating on his own cloud nine right now. So with that game, it kind of, like I said, was textbook. They knew it was going to be a late game for them, and that's when they brought out the power. And I like the adjustments that Vulcan played, too, because they know that they have to have mandatory cloud be a huge part of their team yeah. for the end game. And so no they did it. everything that was necessary to get him back into it was in that lane by himself. And then you want to switch a guy that's level three to like a level five in the top lane. Like mm -hmm. it was hard, but like, they, they were reactionary in just about every part of that. Yeah, and I did like the play from, from Val Rose. He was taking advantage of two. He wasn't going <laughs> to let Mandatory Cloud just farm up and walk back into this game. Absolutely that not. We'll see the replay of the last team fight and just see how farmed up these guys actually were. Yeah, because this is really, it was so even up until this point, and it's decide everything. Nami ult for Rumble ult. There's the Man Cloud jumping in for the back line like I talked about. And Vile, Maple Street, and Eveniscus all back there doing nothing. Wow, NK Inc. not being as tanky on Jarvan gets bursted down. Chris, as soon as he gets out of his Zanyas, gets exploded, and there's just not a mutt enough meat on this uh, Velocity team at this point to to live through the damage here. Mantor Cloud just going wild on that Kha'Zix. Getting the resets. It was, it was pretty scary. It's not that they had tons of assassins, but when you have so much mobility on the team like that, or a Nasus to make you have to focus on something else, it mm -hmm. wasn't, there was just too much focus. You know, Maple Street couldn't live. He was running. Kha'Zix back and forth. 
Like, it was just chaotic in those fights. Mantor Cloud did such a great job controlling the terrain of the battlefield in yeah. that fight. By by doing the jump in, getting his burst down, and then backing out, he didn't waste anything. And he zoned the rest of the team while yeah. Chris, he while Chris was Street using for a good four seconds his, on that uh, fight too. his Kennen ultimate. So that was perfect, perfect play there by Vulcan, and they deserved that, that finish. All right, so coming up, we'll be joined by Vulcan Zuna to talk about their second win of the summer. And then it's our final match of the day when Team Coast takes on CLG. Opening week of the NALCS Summer Split will continue right after these messages.